I'm going to show you how to do a screencast using Loom and putting that screencast into YouTube so that you get automatic closed captioning. And then if you use a tool like Edpuzzle, students can watch the video and see closed captioning. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my Loom, which I have downloaded onto my MacBook and I'm going to use the screen and the camera. I like to have my image in the video because it brings things to a more personal level when you have students. So you can see that with Loom, I have my image that I can move around and students can see me. I can change the size of it and make it bigger or smaller and I can um, choose to turn the camera on or off, but obviously I want it on in this case. And I can make myself full screen if I want to, or I can make myself smaller. Let's see, that's down at the bottom here. I haven't done that one yet. Okay, so I'm going to use the small camera. And what I'm going to do is just say start recording. And I'm going to record just my full entire screen, but I could do a window or a custom size. So I'm going to start recording. And then I'm just creating my video starting at 3, 2, 1. It gives me a countdown so I can get ready. And then I can start my screencast. I can go into present mode if you're in a slideshow. And notice how I'm covering up like some text. So I could always move myself to a different spot if I need to. And I can watch videos. I could do all these different things when I am recording my screen. And I'm just going to go to the next slide. I could go back and forth. I can go up to this menu up here to pause the video. I could also click on this pen tool. And it's kind of like an annotation tool. Um, but it's it disappears after a while, so it only stays for a little bit of time. So it's a great way to capture your student's attention. I'm going to say done because I'm done with that tool. And when I'm done with my screencast, I'm going to press the, um, the red square like record button. So that's ending it. And it takes a little bit of time for it to load, but that was pretty quick. It was a quick video. And what I can do is when I'm in my video, I'm not actually signed in right now, so I don't have many options. I can download this and I can copy the link. Um, if I go into sign in, I also get the ability to get embed code for this. Um, if I click on share, I could also get the embed code. So I really don't need to sign in to Loom right now, but if I wanted to, I can up at the top. Now I want to take this video and I want to get it into YouTube. So I actually have to download the video to my computer. And you can do this on a PC, you can do it on a Mac, you could also do it on a Chromebook, but it will probably end up saving it into your um, Google Drive, which you could then also upload to YouTube. It just doesn't necessarily save onto the computer itself in the same way that it does on a PC or Mac. So I'm going to click download and it says not to close my tab as it's downloading, but that was pretty quick. I see it here, 17 October 2020, Loom Recording MP4. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into YouTube and you need to sign in to YouTube. But if you are in your Chrome browser and you're already signed in to your Google account, it will most likely already be right there. And I'm going to go up to the top of the screen. There's a little video recorder camera with a plus. If I click on that, it says create and I'm going to choose upload video when I'm uploading my video. I can just drag it if it's still down here in my downloads bar in Chrome, or you can click the blue select files and you'll find wherever it is saved on your device. And it's going to take a little bit of time to load. It's going pretty quickly because it's a smaller video. It's at 44%. But up here for the title, I can choose whatever I want my title to be for my video. And so I'm going to call this, um, Loom screencasting uh, CC. Oops, I'm on a new keyboard and I'm forgetting what all these new 
keys are. I'm going to go back up to my other keyboard where I know how to, where all the buttons are. So Loom screencasting, Creative Commons to YouTube to Edpuzzle. So I'm kind of going through this whole process. Um, I can go back and change the name later. I can give a description about it. And what I have to do here is it allows me to upload a thumbnail or I can use one of the thumbnails that's already there. So it's kind of taking some images from different times in the video and I could use any of those images. Or sometimes what I like to do is create a Google slide that has like a nice title on it, download the slide as an image, and then I can upload that image here. So I have like a custom title. I'm gonna just choose this one over here for today. I can choose a playlist if I have created playlists. So I'm gonna put it into my distance learning and canvas playlist. And then it asks whether it's made for kids or not. If it's for students, you definitely wanna say yes, made for kids. And what it's gonna do is it's going to take out a bunch of ads, which is really nice, or it should take out ads, but it also makes it, um, it shows that it's compliant with the Privacy Act, et cetera. You're required to, um, do that but it has info for you if you click what content is this made for i'm going to go to more options and here i can choose other things like tags or language and my video language is in english but if you were recording this in a different language you'd want to choose what that is because that's how it's going to create the auto close captions and i don't need to make any changes here um but I'm showing you where to go if you need to, or if you want to upload your own subtitles or creative commons, you can do that. So you have a bunch of different options. I'm just going to go to next. Oh, I forgot to check. Nope, it's not made for kids. Now, um, here's if I want to add an end screen or cards, you don't need to worry about that. Visibility, you want to make it either public or unlisted. If it's private, it will not work in Edpuzzle. So once the video is public, I can, on the right hand side of the screen, I can copy that link to copy the YouTube video, and then I'm going to press publish. This video happened to publish super quick. Sometimes it takes a little bit of time for that to happen. And once, when it's um, uploading, you can't go to a new tab, but in this case, this was already done. And I can see my video is already there up at the top and it is public. I can go back and edit it if I need to. I'm going to go over to my Edpuzzle account and I'm going to click on YouTube in the left hand menu. Now I'm going to, in the search, type in or paste the URL and now I am in my video. It looks really pixely right now and that's because YouTube takes a little bit of time to process. You get kind of like a preview of a low quality video originally and then it's still working on the higher quality rendering so that could take another extra 30 minutes. But that's okay for right now. It's going to allow me to do what I need to in Edpuzzle. And when I'm done, I'm going to click finish up at the top right hand side of the screen. And then I'm going to get my public link by clicking assign and public links. And I'm going to copy that link and go back into my other account. And I'm going to go into Edpuzzle so you can see what it looks like as a, not technically a student, but for the public. Down at the bottom, you will see right there, closed captioning once I press play. However, when I press play right now, you'll notice that closed captioning is not there. That is because even though it's auto captioning, it doesn't happen immediately in YouTube. Sometimes it might take up to a day for closed captioning to show up. So right now I have my Edpuzzle created, that's okay. As long as I do this at least a day in advance, it should have the closed captioning available to your student and it will show up in Edpuzzle. You don't need to make any changes at this point, um, but it should be available for your students once they press play. So I waited about 10, 15 minutes since I last tried this when I first showed you in the video. And now when I go to press play on the video, you are going to notice closed captions are now a button down at the bottom of the screen. I'm going to press pause for just a second. You can't actually hear the video because I am screencasting and only collecting audio from my
headphones, I'm not, I don't have computer audio turned on. So you're not going to actually hear the video that I'm playing when I'm playing this Ed puzzle. But once I press play, I have closed captioning. When I click on closed captioning, I have different options. I could choose English or I can choose no closed captions. CC doesn't have anything viewable. You need to choose the language and I set up automatic closed captioning. Remember that I chose English as the language that was the default in YouTube. If you wanted to add another language, you could switch it over and you could add in a different language within YouTube um, by doing closed captions for that particular language. Um, it doesn't translate for us. You have to have multiple languages set up. But I'm going to click on English and you can see the captions down below. When I press play, again, you're not going to hear the audio because of how I'm recording, but at least you could see the closed captions that are there. All right, so you get the idea that closed captioning is there, and now that will help students who have um, audio issues um, if they don't have headphones and they're in the classroom and you don't want to hear it, but also students who need to be able to read the um, closed captioning. Now, there are no pronunci like pronunciation type things, or sorry, um, like grammar is it built in. There's no capital letters for the first word. Um, of a sentence. There's no periods in here. I could go into YouTube and edit the closed captions and add all of that, but that takes forever. Um, so I think that this is a great thing for just quick classroom things that you want to create for your students. The extra step of adding it to YouTube is really beneficial. One last thing to note, when you create the assignment in Edpuzzle and you want to assign it to students, make sure that you have turn on CCs, turn on closed captioning, you have it blue and on. There's one thing that you could do to make that a little easier, a default action, is if you click on your icon up at the top right hand side of the screen for your account settings, then click on your name. If you go to settings, you have the option to, by default, have closed captions turned on. And that doesn't mean that every video will have closed captions. It only takes videos that have closed captions. That's when you will see them. So if you upload a video directly from Loom to Edpuzzle, it is not going to have closed captions because Loom doesn't create the closed captions and Edpuzzle doesn't create the closed captions. That is why we had that intermediate step of uploading it to YouTube because YouTube does make those closed captions. But by having these defaults set, that's going to make it a whole lot easier for you in the future. You don't have to remember to check those boxes. However, if you're using a tool like Canvas or Schoology or Google Classroom, it may or may not take the default. So always double check that you have closed captions turned on.